wake up and say hallelujah for this day oh how it blesses me i wake up and see spirit in me oh how it blesses me i'm gonna say every morning thank you thank you say in the new time thank you thank you say every evening thank you thank you oh how it blesses me i wake up and feel more of love in me revealed oh how it blesses me i wake up and know spirit in me grows oh how it blesses me i'm gonna say every morning thank you thank you say in the new time thank you thank you say every evening thank you thank you oh how it blesses me oh how it blesses me house of love we come together this morning in peace in love as family family in this room family online family in this world we share that peace and love and this morning we are blessed to ground that with our music with our presence with our prayers with our message Please join me in affirming. And, and so, so it is. is. Amen. Thank you. Part of our tradition, as most everyone is aware, we are an interfaith gathering, a spiritual community that honors all teachings and spiritual teachers. And now we begin our ceremony that celebrates the oneness of life, which acknowledges that all people of all faiths come for the one universal presence, which we call spirit. Our candlelighter this morning is Judy Wolf. <laughs> she serves in many capacities. <laughs> Let us begin the Tao, honoring the universal path of harmony and equilibrium, the natural way. Shamanic tradition, honoring the beliefs and practices of all indigenous peoples the way of pristine spirituality. Hinduism, honoring the path of knowledge, action, and devotion. Judaism, honoring the ethical path of living by sacred law. Buddhism, honoring the four noble truths and the path of compassion. Christianity, honoring the Christ consciousness as the path of love. Islam, 
or honoring the path of submission to the will of God as the highest calling. And new thought, honoring the metaphysical path of mental healing through the practice of universal spiritual principles. And the last candle, the healing candle of love. We invite you in the stillness of your own mind to bring to awareness the names of anyone you wish to be included in this healing flame of light and love. Now that our flames of faith are fully lighted, we move forward into our celebration, realizing and reaffirming that all paths lead to God. Thank you, Judy. (laughs) Our inspirational quote today from Frederick Douglass, a smile or a tear has no nationality. Joy and sorrow speak alike to all nations, and they, above all the confusion of tongues, proclaim the brotherhood of man. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. <laughs> Great to see everyone here today on this Memorial Day weekend and everyone online joining us. Thank you. Uh, this, uh, my name is, um, the speaker just went, <laughs> 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 my name is Ann Fleming. I'm a practitioner here at this center. Woo. And uh, yes, glad to be here today on this super beautiful day. I don't remember if spring was great. <laughs> it's awesome. And first of all, our announcement, well, no, I want to start off saying, as we always do, that our main tenant is prayer. And if you wish to have prayer, please fill out a prayer request in our prayer bo- near our prayer box here at the entrance. Go online to cslalaska.org, our website. You can fill in a prayer request there. We'll pray with you here right now, right after service. Just tap one of us 
uh, one of our practitioners, um, myself, Reverend Don, Robert in the far back corner, Judy, Bob, uh, and, Linda. and Linda, yes, and, and Karen. 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 Yes, a bunch of practitioners here today. Just say, I would just like a one-minute miracle with you, and we'd be so happy to pray with you and know the highest good. And uh, as far as announcements go, our first one, as we always say, uh, our tithing, we give 5% of our monthly tithe to support the local community within our state. This month is Homer Community Food Pantry. So not only really supporting our center when you tithe, you're supporting the community around us. And then a special announcement, you will be talking about this for the next few weeks, is coming up is Reverend Rachel Hollander is going to be coming to Alaska. She lived here uh, and Don and I and a bunch of us went to practitioner practitioner training with her and uh, she's moved back to Ohio she's pursued her doctorate or is a master's right now yeah anyway she is an awesome reverend she's an author she's a musician she's a sing sign language interpreter she's a pet lover I mean she's just <laughs> most wonderful and uh, she's coming July 6th through July 10th, and we have a couple slides. She's going to be doing several events. First of all is the book event, which she'll discuss her book, From There to Here, An Insider's Guide to Navigating the Darkness. And one of the things, I joined her book club that we off she offered a couple months ago, and uh, she calls herself a Sir Thriver. Uh, she lives with depression and has for most of her life. And she'll talk about, she opened up and talked about what it's like to live with depression in her book for her. And uh, so we'll have discussion, uh, some readings, sharing, interactive discussions, and, and book signings. We'll have some books here that can be purchased for $25, or you may go online to her website, uh, to uh, reverendrachelhollander.com and buy a book there. But uh, it's very interesting to learn about depression, to um, talk about it, and have her shine her light on it. Mm -hmm. Then a uh, musical concert, she'll be leading that on Friday night, July 8th from 7 to 8. She and a few of her musical friends will sing some old favorite songs, will uh, hear some new ones. It should be a great time. On Sunday, the 10th of July, she'll give the sermon and share her thoughts and thinking. Then followed by that, we'll wrap it all up with a parking lot potluck. So, and if it's raining, well, guess what? We'll have potlucks where we usually have potlucks. <laughs> so, pardon? Yeah, what's rain? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> All right. And that wraps up our announcements. Oh, and anyone new today? Uh, we have some welcome packets. Oh, yes, I see a couple. Would you like some welcome packets? It has a magazine and some information about our center. Just raise your hand and we'll bring it to you. Okay, Judy's here. She has some welcome packets for you. Okay, thank you very much.
Cassandra had a favorite memory from her childhood. She remembered the wonderful evenings that she spent with her father. Uh, every Friday evening after work, dad would get off work and come home and pick up Cassandra and they would go together to the local music store. and they would together select the music that they were going to listen to for the coming week. Those trips made her feel special. It made her feel grown up. It made her feel important. It made her feel special. And her dad did that every Friday evening for years and years, all the way through grade school, middle school, high school, and even after she went to college, whenever she was home on a weekend and she'd be home on a Friday, they would go to the music store. It was an important part of her life. But as things happened in the world, she moved away and her time coming back was less and less. And then her father passed away. So now the amount of time that she came back to her home was even less. But even then, when she did, she would go to that music store. And then one visit, she came and she went to go to the store and found it wasn't there anymore. Just as the move from vinyl records to CDs had taken place, now the move from CDs to all digital, to iPods downloading music and there was no longer a need for a music store. And she was filled with sadness. She was really sad about this. It was such an important part of who she was and what she did. And as she sat in her car in front of the now closed music store, she began to remember some of those wonderful, wonderful times. And as she sat there, she realized how important that was. I wrote this down because I want to get it right. Soon she found herself smiling, laughing, and even hearing some of the songs that she had come to love because of the weekly outings with her dad as they spent quality time together. Before she knew it, her sadness had shifted because of these fond memories. By allowing herself to experience the grief and sadness, she was able to turn to a warm place within her spirit and transmute her sadness into gladness through love. Well, good morning. Good morning. Thank you all for coming out today. What a, a beautiful day it is here in Anchorage, Alaska. Uh, thank you for coming out. Uh, wow, it's tough to uh, come inside on a, such a beautiful day. And thank you for those of you who are brave enough to watch on uh, Facebook Live. Uh, glad you allow us to come into your homes, into your life on this day. And also want to welcome those of you who are watching later on Facebook or on YouTube. We were late last week, but we'll be better. <sighs> welcome also to this Memorial Day weekend. I think it's important and I think it's a wonderful tradition of our country to stop and pause 
and pay tribute to those who have made the ultimate sacrifice for our country. And what a wonderful day to do this. Today we continue with our monthly theme. Our monthly theme has been our emotions. And if there's anything that you can take away from the overall from the month, it's this. Our emotions are like signposts along the highway of life. Our emotions are telling us the speed limit. They are telling us the exit points. Our emotions are telling us to watch out for what's happening in our lives. Today, we're going to talk about the emotion of sadness. The title of my talk is High, Low, or Bore Tide. Uh, sometimes we have a high tide and we're underwater. Sadness can be like the tide and it can wash over us. And when we have the high tide, we're underwater. And then at low tide, we can be above the water. We can be high and dry. And things can be going along really well. But then sometimes here in Anchorage, we have a bore tide. And the bore tide can take us from high and dry to underwater very, very quickly. My three major points today, I'm going to talk about sadness. Then I'm going to talk about grief. And finally, the solution. So, sadness. Last week I, I defined anger and I had all these great definitions of anger. This week as I searched for definitions for sadness, all I could get were synonyms. And here are some of the synonyms that I came up with for sadness. Depression, sorrow, downcast, unhappy, dejected, disconsolate, miserable, despondent, and regretful. Um, the one place, I did find one place finally that gave kind of a definition and it, it defined sadness as affected by unhappiness or grief. And I think, number one, those are two kind of different things, so I'm going to talk about them separately. I'm going to talk about unhappiness and then I'm going to talk about grief as a separate thing. But I submit that, like anger, Sadness is on a spectrum. It's everything from a mild disappointment on one side to being debilitating depression on the other. So this idea of sadness and grief is, is on a spectrum. Also, there is a trio, a trio of bad guys that accompany sadness. And that is sadness not felt. And that trio is guilt, blame, and shame. And it is this trio that keeps us stuck in sadness. This last week has been a time of extreme sadness for us individually as human beings, for our country, and I submit even for the entire world. I think the whole world is raw and sore from the war in Ukraine, which is in our consciousness, not really being aware of the other, what, 50 some odd wars that are going on in the world right now. But the one in the forefront of our consciousness is what's going on in the Ukraine. But the events of Buffalo and Uvalde are also at the height of our consciousness. And I was ready to talk about these. I, I, some of the things that came to me in all of this. There is a part of our culture that no longer respects guns. I know when I was little, I remember getting a spanking for pointing a cap gun at one of my little friends as we played Lone Ranger. You never pointed a gun at anyone else. Video games today glamorize guns and we see guns in movies, in uh, television, guns are ubiquitous. We have a vast access to guns within our culture and we have very limited access to mental health services. 
we can pass laws, we can barricade schools, we can barricade grocery stores, but nothing is going to change until a culture of responsibility accompanies gun ownership. And I was ready to talk about that. This, these two events affected me and I think many of us to a great extent, and I realized, I'm all in effect. I am living in this world, in this moment, in a world of effect. And what we are taught, part of our belief system, is to see beyond the effect and to see a greater truth. And we're taught that when we're faced with these things, when we cannot see the truth, when we are faced with confusion and lack of understanding and all that goes with us, that the thing that we're to do is to turn to prayer. So about 9 o'clock this morning, I scratched out that entire part of the sermon. And instead, I'm just going to go into prayer right here, right now. This is different, Aaron, not the same as confused with the treatment after the, you know, the healing treatment at the end, so don't want to confuse it. But I, I do think it's important that we turn to prayer in this minute. And so I simply recognize that there is indeed a power in the universe. There is a magnificent, infinite power in the universe. I call that power God. And I know that God is both imminent and transcendent. That power, God, is permanently pervading and sustaining everyone at every moment. God is omnipresent. There is no place that God is not. God is present at every point in space, at every moment in time, and within every event. God is omniscient. This infinite creative force knows all of everything. It is infinite intelligence. It is infinite wisdom. It is all-powerful. This thing that we call God is greater than shootings. It is greater than wars. It is greater than misunderstandings. It is greater than the separation that we feel from one another as human beings, as fellow creations of the divine. And we know that God is transcendent. It is above our limited human ability to fully experience and comprehend that this thing, God, is greater than a physical experience. We know that this infinite experience never dies. It only continues to grow forever and ever expanding and so we just give thanks. We give thanks for our awareness of the power and the presence of God within our lives. And we know that these effects, these shootings, the wars, all of the other things that are going on in the world right now are also expressions of that infinite creative force. And we can trust that this is being enacted within our lives for a reason. And it is only for us to open up and accept that reason, to learn from it, to grow with it. To step away and know that God is good all the time. And so we just give thanks. We give thanks for the power and the presence of God now and forever. And so it is. Amen. Namaste. Second point is grief. As some of you know, uh, my introduction to this philosophy came through grief. Uh, I became a certified grief counselor with the Grief Recovery Institute. And in ministerial school, my sort of specialty was working with Reverend Dr. Patty Luckenbach um, on her uh, grief recovery programs. 
won't go into all this now, but I haven't done a grief recovery uh, workshop in several years, and I wonder if maybe it's getting to be time. Um, <laughs> good. So if any of you are online watching now uh, and you think that you would uh, benefit from such a program, you can drop a note in the chat room. And for anybody that's watching later, you can just give a call to the center or uh, the line where we send a prayer request. You can drop that in. And if I get that enough, there are enough people will uh, consider having a grief recovery group. Um, what I want, uh, in regard to grief, capsulated version of it is this, is that it is important that we feel our, our grief. It is important that we experience the crappy feeling. It is experience that we go through this. It's important that we do this. This is the important work. And it's hard and it's ugly and it brings tears and it brings sadness and it brings everything else and it's necessary. Perhaps one of the leaders in terms of human dealing with grief and loss is Elizabeth Kubler-Ross and she did a thing on the stages of grief and uh, she labeled these five stages denial, anger, bargaining, depression and acceptance and they're all good and this is all it's all great and this is not a progression in our culture today, we want solutions. We want to go from A to B, and when we get to C, we want to be better. We're done. I'm through with that. I got an A in grief, and I get to move on. And it doesn't work that way because we continually go through these, and we don't cycle through them in an order or anything like that. One day, you could be at a place of acceptance in terms of the grief. I know that this loved one is not going to be back. I know but my little boy is never going to come home again. And the next day, you may be in denial. This didn't even really happen. It's important to experience and embrace all of those feelings. And we've talked about it before in our month of emotions, one that stay away from, we call them our STURBS, short-term emotional relief behaviors, and that's where we do things to bury our feelings. And we do it, and we've listed them all from uh, retail therapy, shopping, to uh, drugs, alcohol, uh, fitness, want some of them get on the treadmill and don't get off. Um, there's all kinds of things that we can do to bury those feelings. And we cannot fall into that trap. Healing will not take place until we face our feelings. Just like Cassandra. When Cassandra was able to sit in front of that music store and remember not the pain of it not being there, but the delight that she experienced with her father, she was able to begin to move past that. She was able to experience the loving time that she spent quality time with her father and so the final point is the solution is love um, there are a lot of things that you can do to walk into these feelings and emotions and this is just a short list of some of them that popped into my head you can talk to a friend who will simply let you cry and not try to fix you, not try to make everything better, just let you cry. You can take a solo walk in the woods or on the beach. You can sink into a favorite piece of music or literature without falling into the disturb of burying your feelings in books or in music. You can even soak yourself in a tub of hot salted water. Now up to this point, each one of the emotions we've dealt with, I've referred back to uh, Abraham Hicks and how they have moved through 
this with their example of the little rowboat. And when we are in the place where we are unable to face our emotions, it is like we are trying to row back upstream. We're fighting the current. But when we are able to shift our little rowboat around and let the current take us, it will lead us to our desired destination. And so I've used an example today. Uh, this is uh, one a, a person uh, did not get a, a promotion that they had wanted uh, very, very badly and they were experiencing sadness. This is the situation. I have been working for the same company for many years, and I probably know this better than anyone who works here. In fact, I believe that I know this company better than the owner of the company. There's a great deal of variety in my work, and I do like that, but it often feels as if the things are assigned to me because no one else wants to do them. And since I have been here so long, I can do just about everything that needs to be done. Last week, an employee who hasn't been here half as long as I have been was promoted to shop supervisor, even though I was next in line and am more qualified. I can't understand why that position wasn't offered to me. I feel like quitting. I think we can all feel the sadness, and I think we'd all probably feel like quitting. So, as we've done before, we start by feeling where you are. What are we feeling? What am I feeling in this moment? No matter how long I'm here or how dedicated I am, I am still overlooked. I'll never get promoted because I have already done everything humanly possible and I still didn't get the promotion. There are unfair factors at play that I don't understand. You can see these are all very negative emotions. These are all rowing back upstream, fighting the current. But it's important that we experience them in the beginning so we know where we are at. But we can do something about it. We can try to gain some power over this. These are all very helpless statements. We'll try some more empowering thoughts. That position should have been mine. I know my employer knows that I am more qualified. So what reason could he possibly have for making this unfair decision? Well, I should just quit. It would be interesting to see this guy managing without me. Then they'll find out who's been holding this all together for so long. Even though these are very negative statements, we're beginning to see our little boat turn because we're no longer helpless. We're beginning to take some steps so that we're not helpless in the situation. But there are negative thoughts. These thoughts are better than the powerless ones we have and we can keep trying with new, more positive thoughts. I know that I'm not the only one who is working hard at work. There are many people who are deserving of more appreciation and awards than they are receiving. It is not my intent to shut the place down and cause hardship for any. I'm probably not the only one who would like this promotion. I'm probably not the only one who felt deserving of it either. I can pull myself together and make the best of this. I'm going to watch the guy who got the promotion and look for traits that may have made the difference. I'm willing to learn and expand. It's possible that this promotion was not in my best interest. There may be something even better for me ahead. When I really think about it, I'm probably not ready for the responsibility of this promotion anyway. I like that it made me think though, I feel energized in this process. I can see how this has expanded my awareness and my horizons. I'm not unhappy with the way this has unfolded. I'm actually quite happy with where I am and I feel eager about what is still to come. You see, with those positive statements, we have now turned our little boat around and that current can take us to that place of fulfillment 
of pride, of joy in our work and what we do. We're no longer rowing frantically upstream. We're allowing the current to take us. Conclusion. What I want you to take away today. We can allow ourselves to feel the feelings that accompany sadness so that we can process through them but not give up on living life. We can allow the lessons that we learn from experiencing sadness to make our behaviors more productive for ourselves and others for healthier living. We can embrace greater compassion giving the personal and global situations of the world. There is much that we can do as we navigate the space of sadness and allow it to return to gladness as we move through it with love just like Cassandra. And so it is with this awareness of the power and the presence of God that I invite my colleagues, the practitioners, to join me in prayer, to join me in knowing that that infinite presence which we call God is indeed within each and every one of us at every moment. It is within the shooter it is within the mom, it is within the dad, it is within the grandpa, it is within the grandchildren, the brothers and sisters. That infinite presence is in Buffalo, New York, and that infinite presence is in Ubalde, Texas. We know that that infinite presence is in the Ukraine, and everywhere else there is fear and war and separation in this world. And we know that that power is greater than war. It is greater than separation. It is greater than shooters. And we know that this thing that we call grief, this thing that we call sadness, can live with us for a short time, but it doesn't have to set up residence. That when we can see beyond this and we can see that truth, that we are all beings of love, we can transcend this pain. We can transcend this experience. And when enough of us are coming from a position of love in this world, there will be no need for guns. There will be no need for conflict. For that power that is greater than guns, that is greater than hate, that is greater than separation, is indeed for us to create a world of peace, a world of joy, a world of plenty. And it is that where we point our boat of fulfillment. And so as I speak my word for each and every person today who is feeling that loss, who is feeling the grief, that we are greater, that, that that part of us is greater than all of the pain. I may not know the solution right now, but there is that part of me that does. And that part of me that does knows that that infinite power and presence of God is supporting us in this and in every moment. And so now we can just give thanks. It is in gratitude that we recognize that power and presence. It is in gratitude that we accept this thing called life. And now we just step back. We allow the current to guide our little boat. We let it go. We let it be. And so it is. Amen. Namaste.
Perfect song, Aaron. <laughs> Great choice. Now is the time in the service where we are afforded the opportunity to participate in another one of our spiritual practices, that being participating in the law of circulation. I also at this time like to recognize some of the uh, people uh, who are online with us today. And this is only a few, but uh, Anne-Marie uh, Moylan, Mark Wolgamuth, uh, Richard Rosendale, Cindy Hensley, Joan Heidel, Michelle Scammon is online today from Paris, where wow. it is 9 p.m. Wow. wow, go Michelle. Go Michelle, <laughs> that's it. Uh, Vanessa Mead, wow, great to see uh, Vanessa. Pamela Belzer, boy, we're going to have to get bigger font going here. Uh, <laughs> Cynthia George, Luann Pogue, Patty McCrary, the Fairbanks uh, connection and Deidre see I left somebody off hmm? oh yeah I'm sure Lynn and Marion are on I'm sure all right let's do our affirmation was there something else I was gonna do oh I did want to put an underscore on um, Reverend Rachel's trip coming up this is a, a great opportunity for us to all come back together for the first time in two and a half years. And I, I really want to invite everybody to, to join us. Uh, yeah, it's going to be a good thing. Mm -hmm. Let's do this. Divine I love, love through, through me blesses, blesses and multiplies all that I have, all that I give, and all that I receive. Thank you, God, God. and so it is.
So as we close our service, we just know that we experience with our emotions. Be aware of the signposts of sadness, grief, frustration, and let that move us to a growth experience, feeling that presence of spirit, knowing that it is in each and every place. It is in all, and we look for that presence in others. We connect with that presence in ourselves, and we let it be. And so it is. And so it is. Amen. Namaste. Wake up and say hallelujah for this day. Oh, how it blesses me. I wake up and see spirit.